Our third question is, how far does it go? The range, so that distance is called the range, depends on the x motion. And I'm not going to say only the x motion, because it depends a little bit, actually, on the y motion. It depends on the time it's in the air. Right? So how far it goes isn't just how fast it's going in x, but also how long it's in the air, which also depends on y. So the two are always interrelated. You just calculate separately. All right, so first thing we need to figure out is uh, find v naught x. I'm sorry, vx naught is what we would call it. The initial component in the x direction, well, it's just v naught cosine theta naught. And then figure out how far does it go in 2 times the time to the apex. So 2 times t apex. And we have to do 2 because it takes that long to go up and that long to go down. And during the whole time, it's moving in the x direction. So here's what you do. You can just use the standard kinematics equation. Its x position is x naught plus v x naught times time plus 1 half a t squared. This would mean acceleration in the x direction. And you look at that, and you say a lot of those are 0, right? So x, it's going to get to, let's see, well, we want x max, right? So the, also called the range. So x max is the specific distance it goes at a specific time, 2 times t apex. So x max, let's see, x naught, 0. Right? We're starting at the origin. Vx naught, we said, is V naught cosine theta naught. So Vx naught t, but t is 2 times t apex. Right? We're figuring out where it is at 2, at a time equal to 2 of the time to get to the apex. And then the third term, 1 half a t squared. Well, what is the acceleration in the x? It's 0. Right? The only acceleration is gravity in the y. No acceleration in the x. So really, this is the only thing we need. The range, which we're calling x max, is v naught cosine theta 2 t, 2 times the apex time, which we can start to simplify v naught cosine theta naught. And then uh, well, let's just put a 2 here. All right, and then what was the apex? It's uh, v naught sine theta naught over g. v naught sine theta naught over g. So if you simplify that, you see that x max, or the range, is equal to 2 times uh, v naught squared sine theta naught cosine theta naught over g. Something like that. And again, you would want to be able to derive that at the drop of a hat, but some equations are worth memorizing if you're going to need to use them over and over again to solve problems. So that might be one. 2 v naught squared sine theta naught cosine theta naught over g. Everything you need is in the initial conditions and the acceleration due to gravity. This also, if you look at it, actually kind of tells you when you get the longest range. Right? So if you're going to fire at a constant velocity but change the angle, what's going to get at the furthest? And uh, the answer is right here. This is how it depends on angles. Sine theta naught cosine theta naught. If you shoot it perfectly straight, it doesn't go very far because theta is really small and the sine of a really small number is a really small number, right? Sine of zero is zero. So a small angle, this term is really small. A big angle, this term is really small. If you shoot straight up, it doesn't go very far. It mostly goes up and down. And that's because your theta is in 90 degrees and the cosine of 90 is zero. So really, you got to figure out where sine theta, cosine theta hits a maximum. And the answer is at 45 degrees. So the reason you get the longest distance at 45 degrees is right here in this sine cosine. If you're reading a book, sometimes they do a substitution where they call this sine of 2 theta. There is a trig substitution where you can convert this to a single sinusoid. But what's the point, really? That's the answer.